In the vast silence beyond Earth, far past the Moon, even past Mars, there orbits a frozen moon locked in the cold grip of Jupiter. From a distance it looks quiet, still, lifeless, a perfect sphere of cracked ice gleaming under the weak sunlight like a shattered mirror. But this is no dead rock drifting through space. This is Europa, and Europa is moving. Its surface stretches and contracts, fissures open without warning and close just as fast. Beneath its icy skin, there's a hidden heartbeat, an invisible ocean surging in the dark, warmed by forces we still barely understand. We've seen the signs, the shifting terrain, the plumes that appear and vanish, the data that whispers. Something is alive beneath all that ice. Not necessarily a creature, not yet, but a system, a world with pressure and warmth with liquid water and raw chemical ingredients, the kind of place where, on Earth, life always finds a way. And if it's happening there, if life has taken hold beneath that frozen crust, it's happening right now, which means we may already be too late to catch it. Europa isn't just any moon, it's one of the most scientifically compelling objects in the entire solar system. Roughly the size of Earth's own moon, it's small, but it holds a secret. Beneath its outer shell of ice, Europa hides an ocean of liquid water. Not frozen pockets, not isolated reservoirs, a global, internal ocean, one that may stretch 60 to 100 kilometers deep. For comparison, Earth's deepest ocean trench only cuts 11 kilometers down. If confirmed, Europa's ocean could contain more water than all of Earth's oceans combined, and yet it has never seen sunlight. Not once, not in four billion years. What keeps it from freezing solid? Not the sun, but Jupiter. Europa's orbit is slightly elliptical, which means the moon gets squeezed and stretched by Jupiter's immense gravity on every pass. This constant tidal flexing produces internal heat, enough to keep the ocean beneath its shell warm, flowing, and in motion. And on the surface, we see the aftermath. Huge cracks, bands of ridges, chaotic terrain where the ice has broken apart and frozen again in strange, jumbled patterns. Europa's surface looks like it's been shattered and glued back together. That's because it has. Unlike our moon, which hasn't changed much in billions of years, Europa is active, dynamic, alive in the geologic sense. And that's exactly what makes it so important. So what does all this mean? It means Europa checks nearly every box we associate with habitability, and yet it does so in a place we never expected. For decades, scientists assumed that life needed sunlight, that warmth from a star was essential. Then we looked deeper, into our own oceans, and found life clinging to hydrothermal vents at the ocean floor. Entire ecosystems, independent of sunlight, thriving in total darkness, feeding on minerals and chemical energy instead of photosynthesis. These extremophiles live in conditions of crushing pressure, searing heat, and toxic chemicals. And they don't just survive, they flourish. Now imagine a world with those same ingredients, heat from within, liquid water, a rocky seafloor rich in minerals, and perhaps even hydrothermal vents. That's what we think exists on Europa. If life can arise in the darkness of Earth's oceans, why not there? We may be looking at a second origin of life, a parallel biology, isolated from Earth for billions of years. If Europa does host life, it's not a distant cousin. It's a separate genesis. And that's the real prize. Not just life, uh, but alien life. Independent. Unrelated. A cosmic confirmation that biology isn't a miracle. It's a consequence. Of course, we've never seen what lies beneath Europa's ice directly. But we've seen hints. 
In 2012, the Hubble Space Telescope captured a possible plume of water vapor erupting from Europa's southern pole. A narrow jet blasting into space from deep beneath the crust. In the years since, more of these plumes have been detected, but they are inconsistent, intermittent, elusive. Sometimes we see them, sometimes we don't, which raises the stakes. If the plumes close permanently, if the fractures seal, we may never again get a sample of that ocean without drilling miles through solid ice. And time is not on our side. Europa's environment is harsh. Jupiter's magnetosphere bombards it with radiation. Surface features shift. The ice thickens. The radiation worsens. What was detectable ten years ago might be invisible tomorrow. This moon is a moving target. We are watching a system in motion, and that motion may erase the very evidence we're chasing. In space science, timing is everything, and Europa may already be closing its doors. The challenge is that we can't respond quickly. Missions to the outer solar system don't launch overnight. They take decades of design, testing, and funding. And once launched, they take years sometimes decades, to arrive. That means everything depends on catching the right window. Miss it, and the next opportunity could be a generation away, the next eruption, the next flyby, the next chance to reach out across the void and sample the ocean of another world. Right now, this moment, is that window. The pieces are finally falling into place. The scientists who spent their entire careers arguing that Europa might host life are finally getting the tools to find out. The engineers who once sketched out probes in notebooks are now building them in clean rooms. The test dives once dreamed of are happening under Arctic ice, deep in Earth's oceans and inside simulation labs designed to mimic Europa's surface. It's not theoretical anymore. It's real, it's happening, and it's happening just in time. Because Europa is changing, and if we wait too long, we may lose everything we've spent half a century preparing to find. But while Europa pulses beneath its frozen shell, something else is stirring here on Earth. Quietly, methodically, a new generation of explorers is preparing to go deeper, to fly farther, to pierce the ice and touch the unknown. The journey has already begun, in oceans, in ice cores, in machines sealed against contamination, and soon it will cross the vast emptiness between planets. Because the mission to Europa isn't science fiction anymore, it's engineering, it's science, it's real, and it's already in motion. Next, we follow the machines being built to make contact with a living ocean, 600 million kilometers from home. If you want to explore an alien ocean sealed beneath miles of ice, you don't start in space. You start in the coldest places on Earth. In the shadows of Antarctic glaciers, inside frozen lakes deep beneath the Arctic Circle, and on the ocean floors near volcanic vents, scientists are already rehearsing for a mission like no other the journey to Europa. This isn't a far-off dream anymore. The mission is real. The countdown has started, and at its heart is the Europa Clipper. Designed and launched by NASA, the Europa Clipper is one of the most ambitious space probes ever constructed. It isn't landing, it's flying, dozens of times, directly past Europa, each pass peeling back another layer of its secrets. Scheduled to arrive in the early 2030s, Clipper will enter orbit around Jupiter and begin a campaign of nearly 50 high-speed flybys of Europa. On each approach, it will scan, measure, and listen. Not just to observe, but to detect. Its body is packed with a suite of sophisticated instruments. Ice-penetrating radar to peer through Europa's crust spectrometers to analyze the chemical fingerprints in plumes, and on the surface, thermal imagers to spot warm anomalies where heat escapes from below, 
magnetometers to trace hidden currents beneath the ice, dust analyzers that could capture and examine particles from active geysers if they erupt. Every tool on board was designed for one purpose, to search for signs of habitability or signs of life itself. But Clipper won't land. It's a scout, a surveyor, a silent listener passing above a hidden sea. To prepare for Europa, a world no one has touched, we've turned to Earth's most extreme frontiers. Beneath Antarctica's frozen lakes, autonomous robots are already diving through boreholes, navigating in darkness, mapping the underside of the ice. These machines are prototypes, early versions of the vehicles we hope to send across the solar system. They're not flashy, no sci-fi theatrics, just silent, rugged machines, tubular bodies, sensor arrays, self-healing code. They are designed to survive freezing brines, crushing pressure, and absolute isolation. Similar tests are happening deep in Earth's oceans, where robotic subs descend near hydrothermal vents, searching for the same chemical conditions that might exist on Europa's seafloor. In both cases, the focus is precision and autonomy, because when you're operating half a billion miles from home, there are no second chances. The machine must adapt, it must endure, and above all, it must be clean. One of the most overlooked challenges of exploring Europa is something invisible, contamination. If we deliver Earth microbes to an alien ocean, we risk corrupting the very evidence we're trying to find. So the engineers aren't just building machines, they're building quarantined explorers. In clean rooms, every bolt, wire, and circuit is sterilized. Tools are baked, irradiated, scrubbed down at the microbial level. Nothing unsterilized can go, not even a fingerprint. This is planetary protection at its highest level, not just to shield Europa, but to preserve the truth. Because if we do find something, we need to be absolutely certain it didn't come from us. While Europa Clipper surveys from above, teams around the world are already developing the next generation. Landers that might one day drill through the ice. These are cryobots, robotic probes designed to melt their way downward over weeks or months, descending into the ocean below. Some models trail communications tethers, others are entirely autonomous, leaving only a single signal at the surface. We've made contact. Others imagine ice-penetrating impactors designed to burrow deep on arrival and deliver instruments close to the ocean's edge. They aren't science fiction anymore. Some are already being tested in ice caves, inside glacial tunnels, and within liquid nitrogen chambers that mimic Europa's bitter temperatures. The dream has shifted. It's no longer, could we do this? It's now, how soon can we launch? What's easy to forget is how long this has taken. Many of the scientists working on Europa missions today first proposed them in the 1980s, back when Voyager had only just passed Jupiter, back when our knowledge of Europa was a handful of blurry photos. They waited through decades of budget cuts, design revisions, failed proposals, and silence. And now, in their lifetime, they are watching the blueprints become spacecraft. Engineers who sketched dreams in college now hold the tools to build those dreams. The mission they once imagined is sitting on launch pads and inside vibration test chambers. This is not just a milestone for space science, it's a generational convergence, a moment when ambition, technology, and timing align. The window is open, and this time we're going through. Thoughtful. And so, here we are, standing at the edge of an ocean we've never seen, preparing to send our machines into the frozen dark. The Europa Clipper is more than just a spacecraft, it's a bridge between decades of unanswered questions and the answers we may finally be ready to hear. 
Because whether or not we find life beneath the ice, this mission is about something deeper. It's about what we choose to seek, what we're willing to wait for, and what it means to keep asking questions, even when the answers might be buried under miles of silence. Europa is still out there, shifting, cracking, breathing vapor into space. It won't wait forever. And for the first time, we're not just watching, we're on our way. Thanks for joining us on this chapter of Uncharted Odyssey. If this journey inspired you, if it sparked even one new question, consider subscribing to the channel, because there's more out there. More missions, more mysteries, more frontiers. And together, we'll keep exploring them. Until next time, stay curious.